Hello, it's Sunday, and that means uh, old man yells at clouds. And today, really, really, uh, that's going to get a lot of hate comments. Old man yells at clouds. Now, when I was your age, <laughs> no, really, um, when I was younger, when I was a little boy, no, um, you know, your grandpa was always like, you know, when I was your age, and what's happened to the music nowadays? It's one of these. Not necessarily because I disagree with whatever music's going on, but with comments I'm getting about some music that I'm doing, saying, uh, oh, old man's trying to do metal, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what is metal? Tell me. Because many, many things count as metal, and people watch a video I've done with a you know track that's, for my age, pretty heavy. And then, oh, that's not metal, and uh, weak sauce, and uh, you know, old man, blah, 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 I can't, or when I do an eight string or whatever, seven string, I played seven strings in 1990, when most of you guys weren't even around. Well, some of you probably were around. So, what is metal? I mean, listen to Paranoid, Black Sabbath. That's the birth of metal. That's metal. But is it what is metal today? No. There are so many different genres within metal that it's pretty arrogant to watch someone's song or whatever or someone's riffing and then say, oh, you know, that's not metal. No, it's not your metal. It's not modern metal. But there was new metal. There's thrash metal, which is pretty damn antiquated. Metallica isn't really that heavy anymore. But would you ever say Metallica isn't metal? Of course you wouldn't. Of course you wouldn't. Is Megadeth metal? There isn't that much double bass going on. Not seven strings. Not drone riffing. So why in the world would, would you say that that's metal and that isn't? It all is. Now if you listen to Judas Priest, I mean that's absolutely metal. And you listen to 80s Priest. That's not a lot of gain. That's not low. Oh, oh, before I really, 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 really get into it, uh, today's sponsor, uh, like last week's sponsor, thank you so much to Gear for Music for wanting to sponsor these videos. Uh, Gear for Music, I didn't really have on my radar, and they, through the last couple of years, came out of nowhere in a way. And I always thought that that's a, that's a British shop, but it isn't. They, sh they ship worldwide. And uh, they've got warehouses in uh, England, Ireland, uh, Sweden, Germany. So things, when you buy them, wouldn't have to come from England, go through customs and all that stuff. No, no, no. They are um, even offering next day shipping on uh, a lot of stuff or a lot of areas, regions, uh, they, uh, they have a huge selection, over 60,000 different products. So even though they might not have everything you're looking for, they have very likely most of what you're looking for. Obviously, all the big brands in the guitar industry and uh, piano synthesizers, uh, studio, uh, live, all that stuff. They're one of the big stores. Um, as I said, shipping worldwide, which is interesting for their in-house brands, the Gear for Music Guitars, uh, there's Sub-Zero and a whole bunch of Hardwood and a bunch of others. So if you are on a shopping spree for anything, you might want to consider adding Gear for Music on your... I'll check out the pricing and shipping list. Of course, they've got money-back guarantee... Uh, ship back within X amount of days. I think it's 30 or 14 or 30, whatever. Um, they've got the same warranty and guarantees as others. So while you are checking out certain shops that you frequent, you might check out their pricing, which I'm assuming is probably going to be similar because they all kind of fall in the same pricing. But then there's the in-house brands, which you can only get there, and that might be a very good alternative to some other brands. Point is, check them out. It's fine if you don't buy anything, but if you find them to be a store that is great, I had some comments, people saying I've been shopping there for years and it's great. 
So uh, might be something to consider. And thank you so much for them to spawn. Thank you so much for them to spawn. Thanks to Gear for Music for, that's English, sponsoring these rants in November. Now, when I demo or review something, I don't demo. Why do I always say demo? When I review something that has metal tones and I get a seven string and I can't do the modern genty stuff or play Meshuggah riffs, saying, you know, old man's trying to do metal, that's obviously bullshit because there are so many different variations of metal. Judas Priest is actually compared to what we have now, not heavy. Now, apparently, metal is only very fast, dissonant, drony stuff that's not even seven string. It's probably dropped seven string or eight string stuff. Jung, 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 whatever. Not whatever. I, I have examples. And yeah, this is old man yelling at Cloud because I've done a lot of metal. I've done prog metal. With some bigger people, I've been reviewed around the world and people said, this is really good shit. In what now counts as metal, apparently when there isn't growly, darky, screamy vocals, as soon as it's singing, apparently it's not metal anymore. Well, tell that to Aussie. It's Aussie metal. Nowadays, they would probably be counted as hard rock, but nobody would ever say Aussie is hard rock because that's clearly metal. Judas Priest, rock? No, 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 that's clearly metal. I mean, I can keep listing things. And there's just so many variations of the style that some people commenting simply are just seeing it from their very little narrow bubble. Personally, I don't want the modern stuff where singing is gone and it's just growly stuff. It's just, it's not because it's too heavy for me. I can handle some heavy music, but it's not melodic. Okay? I, I've done tons of metal albums. I've done an 80s metal and prog metal and whatever. But apparently that's not low enough. That's not heavy enough. So let's talk about what's happening nowadays. And personally, and I'm going to yell at that cloud, why I don't like it. It's not because it's heavy. I prefer a melody, preferably in vocals. I also prefer a groove. And what is a groove? I mean, God, there's so much stuff to cover. We're going to talk about drones and seven strings and low, low stuff, but let's talk about groove. I like a groove. And I am of the opinion, again, yelling at the cloud, you're going to comment your balls off on this video, that nowadays there isn't a lot of groove in metal or almost none. Why? Well, I personally, as an arranger, I have a little bit of a background in music, okay? I don't just play with amps. Yes, I, I'm an arranger. I feel that groove is the ebb and flow of space versus no space. Miles Davis said, music is what happens between the notes, okay? And there simply isn't a lot of between the notes anymore. So I would say the ebb and flow of space and no space and the ebb and flow of dynamics. Now, a groove that you can really just like, you know, get into it, which can be done in metal, just isn't done a lot, would be an impulse, something sparse where you would, for, for example, don't have low frequencies, you have a hi-hat, you have something going on, keeping the time. And then another impact, which would be the snare. You know, you can do these things. But if you fill it with double bass the whole time, you can groove with double bass. But again, you need those dynamics. It's possible. But if you just mechanically, I'm pushing myself away, mechanically fill it and trash it with stuff, and it's while dynamics are gone, the ebb and flow of space and no space is gone. If you're doing blast beats, which I despise with a passion, um, someone's going to say, well, no, there's dynamics and they're all bullshit. It, the idea is just fill it 
with lots of shit. And because it's so non pulsy it's not pulsy in terms of loud, soft, 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 loud, soft, soft, and you know, oh, loud, loud, whatever. You don't have the dynamics and you don't have the space to really tell when the impulses are. It's very difficult for the band to sit on it rhythmically and really lock in. If it's just, well, then you would have to play on the guitar very mechanically and really be on it. But that doesn't really happen. So there's usually drums filling in a very non-groovy mechanical way, which is, as a discipline, fascinatingly amazing. And I respect drummers that can do this as a discipline, not musically. Okay, musically, pff, poop. But then sitting on top of it with a guitar, where do you lock in? You don't know where the two and the three really is, except for your, you have to feel it internally because the drummer doesn't give it to you if he goes, you know? Locking in for the rest of the band, rather difficult. So for me, groove comes from some space in the music and dynamics. Now, if everything is loud, which a lot of metal is nowadays, nowadays, and everything is filled, nobody actually lets a note ring out anymore. Of course, exceptions, of course. But if it's all filled, where's the groove? Where's the bob your head? And obviously that's not, you know, you're not, you don't want to listen to Jackson 5, so you listen to metal. It's all good. Whatever you want to listen to is totally fine. But I feel we are losing the groove. Now, and I also feel, really, that we're missing and losing the memorable riff. Let me put it this way. I do have, no shit, the highest respect for periphery, Meshuggah, monuments. I'm friends with John Brown. He's a great guy. He would actually tell you exactly the same things to a point. Playing these modern riffy things is difficult. It's a discipline. I wish I could do it. I mean, if I practiced and learned them, yes, I could. I just don't have the discipline. I'm in awe of what John can do on the instrument, of what Michel Mansour can do on the instrument. Um, and obviously, when the vocals kick in, periphery is very poppy, very cool stuff. But when we look purely at the riffs, the nature of the beast is that we have drones, right? So we have all this seventh or eighth string, probably down tuned. So we're probably talking A, E, or even lower. Drop G sharp, who knows? So you're droning on that lowest string and playing some on top, you know, and, and, and some um, uh, dissonant things, so it's metal, which is all cool and, um, and a challenge and awe-inspiring, but melodically for the riff, and riffs are also melodic, you're left with that low drone, that's what's in here. So it's dong 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 And there's other stuff happening on top, but that stuff is usually fast. And a lot of it fills, okay? So there's low, low, high, high, low, low, high, high, and it's just filling. So there isn't riffing, I mean, uh, uh, grooving. There isn't leaving space. And the space sometimes is important. So. Let's say you've got band A doing low, low, high, high, low, low, high, high, low, low, high, high. And the next band is low, 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 high, 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 low, 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 high, high, high. So that high stuff, unless it's very, very, very memorable, which rarely happens, is cool stuff and obviously makes it a different riff. But is it different enough to be super memorable? I would dare to take any model, model, modern metal listener 
present them with a variety of riffs, which are all cool to listen to, but tell me immediately, oh, that's that song from that band. And let's take Paranoid, bam. Uh, Breaking the Law. I mean, I can, you know, let's name a million classic riffs. They are classic riffs for a reason, because they are actually memorable. You can immediately have them in your head. Uh, paranoid. So you've got these dotted eighth, sustained notes, then faster notes. Uh, there's a melodic aspect. You can remember these. You can immediately recognize them. Is that still happening in metal? Can you really recognize these riffs? Will they be recognized 20 years from now as, oh, that's that periphery song based on the guitar riff? That's that Scar Symmetry song. And trust me, highest respect for the people in the band, for their playing ability, for being able to pull that shit off. It's great. But... How memorable are these riffs? Yes, they're brutal. Yes, they're fast. But shouldn't there be more to music than fast and brutal? And I have a feeling that metal has been just reduced to it's got to be brutal, otherwise it's not metal, which obviously is bullshit, looking at the past. Now, Let's talk about low stuff. So we talked about groove has been reduced greatly because of filling it with notes that also count for the guitar. Filling, 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 filling. Filling it with notes and being dynamically very flat. Now, we have these drones going on based on the riffs with the low uh, guitars, with the, with the extended range guitars. Again, loads of fun to do. When I play shit like this, it is fun. Don't want to take that away from anyone, but how memorable is it? And again, I'm, I'm having, having an issue with people saying, oh, what you do is metal. No, it's just a different, more classic, more old fucking fart form of metal. I'm an old guy. I mean, older. Yeah, old, whatever. But I think you'd be hard pressed to find some modern riffs that you would actually be able to sing, that you would be able to remember. Because a lot of it is mathematical uh, Morse code type formulas. And it's cool. It's a challenge. How memorable is it? I mean, where's the... Uh, 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 I mean, come on, smoke on the water, that's a fucking riff. Okay, you might say it's a rock riff, whatever. Let's talk about low stuff. One of the issues with the really low stuff is um, the lower you go, the harder it is, especially with all the distortion and the density and everything on the same level, to discern the tonality. So you might go, oh, 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 oh. But you don't really hear the different notes that clearly. So even though there is a riff going on, which might even be in a minor flat nine tone, whatever, be melodic in a way, it's so low that it's very difficult to hear the actual notes. So if you don't hear the notes progressing, it's less memorable. It's brutal, it's low, it's heavy. I get that. But you're taking away the audience's ability to discern the notes. Yes, heavy, brutal, low. Mm. But it all, for me, and it's not like I'm not capable of understanding music, for me, it, it all kind of melts together. It all kind of melts together into, it's just low, but what are the actual notes doing? I don't know. Especially if you're going fast. So if you're taking uh, Animals as Leaders, eight string guitars, really low and really fast stuff, it all becomes a, but what are the notes actually doing? Play the same thing in octave higher. Yeah, okay, there's my clear notes. But down there, it all becomes a mumbly mush of some fast low notes. But what are they actually doing? You might be playing totally different notes next time. Nobody can actually tell. So I think the combination of no space, no groove, 
very low and very fast is reducing the memorability memorability of the riffs. I have a whole bunch of um, little examples. I went through hits, metal hits, new stuff from 2023. There were exceptions, Metallica, blah, blah, blah. But let's listen to this. second or third one in there was actually kind of groovy and in the end we got a little bit more genty but you can tell with the more genty stuff even though periphery says gent's not a genre which is i'm sorry that's not correct it is a subgenre of metal with certain stylistic elements that they do which is the more complex low rhythms that are played on droney uh, low strings, which are being supported with the kick drum. Okay, it's kind of a mathy thing, and then we turn that around and we add one. It's kind of proggy, but not. That's that's a style. Some of it is more interesting to listen to. Some of it, for me, is less interesting to listen to. Not arguing that. But I would argue, I don't know how many times I would have to listen to any of this to instantly recognize it 10 years from now. Um, and that that's, that's fine. Maybe you just enjoy listening to it in the moment. Um, I'd be... I think you'd be hard-pressed at a show when the band starts the next riff. Maybe Meshuggah's Bleed is a little bit different. There was Meshuggah in there. Cool. Well played. Amazing, cool, interesting rhythm. Is it enough for being memorable? Is it enough for being a song? Does it have to be? I don't know. But again, I'm an old fart yelling at the clouds. For me, it, it has to. And there's space for every kind of music. If this is what you enjoy, that's fine. But if this is what you enjoy, telling someone, and again, this is just me being bitter about comments, but telling someone, oh, you know, that's not metal. Well, you're going to tell Ozzy he's not metal? Going to tell Judas Priest they're not metal? Uh, Going to tell Dio he wasn't metal when you meet him down in hell? Come on. There's space for a lot of different kinds of metal. I argue that riffs are dying out, that good riffs that are very memorable are dying out because in today's modern metal, there is a tendency to overplay massively, play too many notes, too much drums, everything too much. For me personally, I love music when it grooves. And again, there was one or two things in there was like, okay, but then it's all very, very low and you can hardly discern the different notes. Brutal, yes. I argue you can be brutal on drop D. You can. Should, should I? I mean, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's a song. Um, here's something that I did, which I think is kind of brutal. 
Not that kind of brutal, different kind of brutal, but that's in drop D. And yeah, obviously, different kind of brutal, right? I get it. But it's a 6 8 thing. It has a pulse. Not saying that's better than the other stuff. I don't even know what I'm saying. It's just some old guy yelling at the clouds. But I wanted to talk about metal riffs not being that memorable anymore. And not being that discernible in terms of pitch. And then the. I don't know. Give me a Celine Dion song any day before I have to listen to that stuff. I'm serious. But I mean, it, it, that exactly tells you why I might not be the right guy to talk about this stuff. But saying I'm too old to understand metal or make metal. Again, tell that to Ozzy. I want to see you. I want to see you walk up to others saying you're not metal anymore. Good luck with that. Have the balls to do that. Idiots. Go, go up to Rob Halford and call him not metal enough. Go right ahead. I'm done. Thanks for watching. Come back next Sunday for me to yell at the clouds and animals at the end. That's a puzzle in my mind peace lost it on the way a price I have to pay gotta read between the lines there is no rest and no release till I sold the case gotta save my face